So this particular webinar is a beginner's guide to print and cut. So it's it's designed to give you an overview um, of the of the process of printing and cutting and some of the bits and pieces that you're going to need to get you off of the ground. So this is for any of you guys that perhaps outsource at the moment, um, or if you've got vinyl cutters, etc., and you're looking to branch out. Um, hopefully, this will be the webinar for you. Um, in terms of questions as well, just one additional point on that, because it's just myself administering the presentation today and the webinar, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll answer all of the questions at the end. So feel free to pop them in as we go, um, but I'll, I'll come back to those. And if there are any particularly complicated ones, then I'll, then I'll respond to those afterwards. Um, so yeah, this is a beginner's guide to print and cut. Okay. So the series overview here, the first session is going to be an overview of print and cut. The second part of the webinar is going to focus a little bit on design using Coral and Illustrator to give you an overview of that. So helping you with basics in terms of adding cut lines to designs, um, how to use shapes, how to use text, etc. Um, and then the third part of the webinar series is going to be focused on printing. So the overview, overview is today. Um, the design section is coming up in a couple of weeks time on Thursday and the printing section is going to be a couple of weeks after that as well. In terms of the benefits of print and cut, it's a cost effective solution. So because you have your printing and cutting in one device, um, that allows you to, like I say, just have one device and integrate the two together. Um, also, you can actually purchase a printer and cutter separately as well. Um, but it's, it's worth thinking about the space that you've got available when doing that. Another factor in terms of print and cut to think about is the quality of the output that you can generate. So particularly Roland devices, we pride ourselves on the quality of the output that machines produce. Um, and finally, versatility. So print and cut is incredibly versatile. Um, and you'll see that in the next, in the coming slides. So you can create a lot of different types of output with a print and cut device, and it's very, very flexible. Um, so in terms of applications, the first one that we've got here are garments. So you can get a whole range of uh, garment materials or heat transfer materials that can be pressed onto um, your t-shirts, hoodies, etc. Um, and those look really, really nice with print and cut graphics on there. You can also create stickers and labels as well. So these can be for indoor or outdoor use. So you, you have inks that are incredibly durable. However, you can also choose to laminate those as well. Um, so this could be stickers for products. It could be window stickers for shops, for example. Um, there's a lot of flexibility within that. You can also use a print and cut device to create signage as well. So signage is probably the sort of traditional application that you would think of when you think of print and cut. Um, and again, that could be things like um, first aid kit boxes and, and kind of signs to indicate where those are. It could be signs for a warehouse, for example, indicating particular hazards. Um, it could equally be um, signage for the front of a shop as well, for example. Um, Point of sale is another really good application here. So um, what you'll see in this image here is the type of thing that you would see in Boots, for example, where you have an area with your beauty products on top um, and then there's print and cut graphics on the side just displaying the branding. And you'll see a lot of that when you're out and about. Um, from a vehicle wrap perspective, so this one's a, a kind of full vehicle wrap. However, what you can do with print and cut devices is also create partial wraps as well. Um, so that might mean that you either color change, say, half of a vehicle, for example, uh, and then you overlay graphics over the top. Or it could be something um, like you see here, which is really quite creative and covers the whole car. And finally, you could use it for something like short run applications as well. So if you're looking to create prototypes, for example, um, then print and cut is great for that sort of thing. And there's lots and lots of additional applications that aren't covered here. So again, if you guys have got questions um, on other applications or you've got something in particular in mind that you're looking to create, um, pop that in the dialogue box and I'll, I'll try and come back to you on that at the end. Um, so the next slide here is just the essentials. So the things that you're going to need to get you off the ground. The first of those is a printer and some inks. You're also going to need some media or material to print onto. And finally, you're going to need some software as well. So in the coming slides, what I'm hoping to do is to go into more detail on each of those to help you make an informed decision um, when looking at print and cut and to try and find the best device for you. So let's duck into printer and inks firstly. So printer and inks. Um, 
Thinking about the printer itself, a key, a key part that you're going to want to consider is the amount of work that you want to put through the machine. Do you plan on keeping it busy sort of day and night? Do you have quite a high workload? Perhaps you worked um, elsewhere or you've already been outsourcing work? Or is it the case that you're just starting off? So you want to consider how much throughput you're going to need from the machine. Also, support's a really important element as well. So if you're going to be um, you know, providing any of the aforementioned applications to customers, you're going to want to ensure that if your machine does go down, then you've got the support to get that back and live um, within a short space of time, and then you can get back to the work that you're producing. Also, you're going to want to ensure that you've got the right tool for the job. So this will be a combination of all of the factors that you're going to see on the screen here shortly. Um, but it's, for example, if you've got a particular material that you need to print, then it's always worth having a go with the particular printer that you're going to be buying to ensure that you're going to have that compatibility and that you're going to be able to produce at the rate that you want to as well. Reliability, of course, is a very important factor as well. Um, so you're going to want to ensure that your, your printer can run um, for the duration of time that you need it to each day, and that when you come back to it the following day, it's there and it's ready to go again. And again, at Roland, we pride ourselves on the reliability of, of our particular machines um, and, and want to ensure that those run um, consistently for you. The final part to consider as well, and, and this bit's easy to forget, is, is the size of the machine that you, you need. So um, it depends on the type of application that you're going to do in terms of the printable width that you might need. For example, if you're going to do um, lots and lots of wall graphics or you're going to do lots and lots of banners, you might need a slightly wider machine. Um, if you're just going to do stickers, maybe you could get away with something a little bit smaller. It's also worth thinking as well about the sort of um, space that you've got within your office or, or wherever you're set up at the moment. So with a lot of print and cut devices, it's not only the size of the device itself, um, but also just the space around it. So you have ventilation in there um, and just ensuring as well that you, you can adequately kind of cool the printer when it's hot um, and ensuring that you've got a kind of stable temperature as well. So all of those things are important considerations. Um, so just moving on here. In terms of the inks, there's a few things to think about as well. So you have your colors firstly. So most, most print is based on cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And those are mixed together to then create the output that you see in front of you. If you're particularly color focused, however, and have customers that are, um, need to hit particular Pantone colors, then you may want to consider adding additional inks in there as well. So um, for example, at Roland, we offer a machine that also includes a red, an orange, and a green ink. Um, we have others that just have orange in, for example. So dependent on the type of printing that you're going to be doing, it's worth thinking about whether you need cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, or something else in that mix as well to help you hit those colors. It's also worth thinking about emissions as well. So naturally, you'll want to be safe when you're printing. Um, and again, this depends on the size of the space and the ventilation that you've got in there. Um, but all of our Roland inks are Green Guard certified. And that's something that you want to look for in any inks on your printer. Um, and that basically means that they have um, safe levels of, of um, emissions coming from them when, when you're printing and when you're curing afterwards. Ink type is another important question to ask yourself. So there's a, a few different kind of printer uh, types out there. When it comes to print and cut, UV or eco solvent are probably the two most popular. You will also see some latex devices as well. Um, and each of these kind of has benefits and drawbacks. So thinking about UV versus eco solvent, for example, UV might be slightly better for label applications because you can have a gloss ink in there as well. Um, so you could pick out certain parts of your design. You could add a texture, for example, but it would be less good for something like vehicle wrapping because you don't have the flexibility of the ink in order to work with it in that way. Um, equally, eco solvent is great, you know, from a from a vehicle wrapping perspective, it's very flexible. Um, one of the slight drawbacks is that you often need to leave your prints to outgas for a period of time, um, usually kind of four hours plus, dependent on the formulation of the ink. And that just ensures that the gases escape um, before you then start applying to a surface or you need to laminate over the top. Um, so there's kind of benefits and drawbacks to, to each of those. Um, and it really depends on what you're looking to do. Durability is really important as well. So if you're going to be creating indoor applications or outdoor applications, it's worth thinking about the lifespan of your inks 
in terms of those two um, and, and how long they would actually last in the conditions that you're going to be exposing your applications to. Um, so a, a different ink formulations, again, will have different durations of time and will interact with the material that you're going to be printing onto as well. Um, special inks is, is another thing to consider. So I mentioned gloss inks there when I was talking about UV and the fact that you can create textures, um, you can pick out certain parts of your design to make it look really quite snazzy. Um, you can also get a white ink in some machines as well. So if you need to print a clear material, having a white ink can be really beneficial. So if you're creating window graphics, for example, um, a lot of window graphics are stuck onto the inside of a window and are visible from the outside and are actually backed with the white in behind. So if that's gonna be the application that you're going for, um, then it'd be worth considering a white ink as part of your setup. Moving on through here, so the next consideration is our media. And in here, I'm going to go into a kind of basic overview of media. And there are three main types that you'll probably come across. So you have some that are adhesive backed, you have some which are heat transfer, so they're activated by a heat press. And then you have some that are non-adhesive. With a lot of the non-adhesive materials, they're not actually cuttable. Um, but we'll come back onto that in a little while. When it comes to adhesive vinyls, there's a few categories that they tend to fall into. So the first one is monomeric vinyl. So this is created through, if you imagine a bit like when you're baking and, and you take your dough and you, you roll it out, a monomeric vinyl is created using a similar process. Um, a monomeric vinyl tends to be the kind of cheapest vinyl that you can get hold of. And it's great for a lot of flat applications. So it can be really good for stickers. Um, it can be great for short term promotional work, for example, as well. It's generally designed to not last quite as long as the next one on this list, which is polymeric vinyl. So polymeric vinyl is kind of a, a standard vinyl that you'll see used quite a lot. It can be used for vehicle graphics um, and it's made in a very similar way to monomeric, but it just has some additional higher grade products in there, which allow it to be more flexible. So when, when it's worked with and it's put onto a surface that's, that's perhaps curved or has angles, for example, a polymeric is a slightly better choice for that type of application. Finally, the third type of um, vinyl that you'll come across quite often is a cast vinyl. So um, a cast vinyl is made rather than starting with a block and, and kind of rolling it down, a cast vinyl is poured instead. So it's made at its end output size, meaning that it's most flexible and it's best designed for working with things like um, wrapping vehicles or, or sometimes, for example, we have people on courses that will wrap kitchens. Um, that, that type of material is, is great for that. In terms of pricing, um, you, you'll see a difference between monomeric, polymeric and cast, and cast will tend to be the most expensive of those. The other type of material that you'll often see within the adhesive category is polypropylene. And this is used quite a lot when you're doing window applications. And the reason polypropylene is used is because it doesn't shrink quite in the same way that a, a normal vinyl would. So when you stick it to a window that's exposed to heat day in, day out from the sun, it's less likely to kind of shrink back into its original shape. It, it kind of stays where, where you want it to be. So that can be a really great um, choice if you're, if you're looking for that type of application. When it comes to heat transfer materials, there's a few categories that materials fall into here. And, and you'll find that there are probably a lot more options, again, in the adhesive category and this heat transfer category that I'm going to outline here. Um, but the first one that you will encounter is a universal heat transfer vinyl. So this can be used on lots of different garment types um, and it, it's fairly flexible. But you can also find ones that are more stretchable. So that's better suited to things like gym clothing, for example, where you're going to be moving around a lot um, so that it would have a slightly different formulation that would allow you to do that. The final thing that you might find is some low heat transfer vinyls as well. And the low heat transfer vinyls can be great for going on to, um, as well as garments, going on to other items. So, for example, I've had customers that have come on courses that have been able to heat transfer onto notepads if they're made from the right material. And often that will be a low heat um, solution that they're using to do that. Finally, in the non-adhesive category, because this is a, an introduction to print and cut, but it's important to also consider what else you can you can print. You can also print papers. Uh, you can also print canvas. 
and you can also print banners as well. Those are three kind of non-adhesive applications that are really quite popular um, and we see quite a lot on courses. So that's just a bit of an overview of, of the different types of media that you're likely to be using um, day to day, dependent on your application. So the final part of the mix here is software. Um, and software is really important. And the first thing that you need in order to run that software is a computer. Now, a lot of the software that will drive our printers in particular, um, and generally other printers out there tend to be PC based. So a lot of design programs are often Mac based, but the software to drive the printers themselves tend to be PC based. And as a kind of building block for the rest of your setup, it's usually important to have a computer that's fairly powerful so it can deal with the demands of designing, and, and then outputting afterwards. And the two kind of categories of software that you'll see and, and you'll need in order to have one of these printers is a, some design software and what's called known as RIP software. So the design software is where you're going to put together your text, your shapes, um, and, and do all of your kind of colors and all of that sort of stuff, put your cut lines in. The RIP software then acts as a bridge between your design and your printer, and it helps convert all of that information um, so it can then be outputted. When it comes to design softwares and RIP softwares, there's a lot of different options out there. So design softwares include things like Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. We've got Coral Draw and Coral Paint pictured on here. We've also got SignLab and a newer program called Affinity Designer. And there's no right or wrong really when it comes to design programs. It's, it's whatever you're comfortable with using, whatever's most affordable to you. So for example, um, a lot of people choose to use Illustrator because it's on a, a monthly subscription, whereas others prefer to buy something like Coral Draw or Affinity because you pay up front, you know what you've paid, and, and that's your that's your kind of cost for that particular product. The other category that design programs fall into really broadly is, is a bitmap based program and a vector based program. And that's the difference really between Illustrator and Photoshop. So to get the most out of your printer in, in order to be able to design um, cut lines, you need a vector based platform. So fundamentally, the difference between bitmap and vector, bitmap is made up from a, a series of pixels, whereas vector are, are shapes that are kind of concocted from points in a, a digital space that are joined by lines. Now that sounds really abstract when I explain it like this, I know, but hopefully in the next webinar, we'll go into a bit more detail and that, that'll make a little bit more sense. But just to, just to outline at this point, it's a vector-based drawing platform like Coral or Illustrator that you're gonna be, want to be using generally for your uh, design. When it comes to RIP, so all of our Roland printers come with a free RIP software called VersaWorks. Um, you can actually get other platforms as well that can be used to push the designs out via the printer. Um, and the RIP plays a really important role and has lots of great features as well. So um, RIPs can be used to do anything from uh, tiling a design, for example. So if you, if you had a whole wall's worth of design, which is say five meters wide by two meters high, uh, and your machine is only 1.6 meters wide, you can break that down so then it can be outputted and can be popped on a wall like you would see wallpaper being laid, for example. So you've got features like that. You can also control the quality. You can control the colors a little bit as well. Um, with, with some of the other platforms like Ergosoft, Wasatch, SignLab, um, they just often have some additional features when it comes to creating cut lines, etc. But with VersaWorks, you're going to need to have, have created most of that beforehand in Illustrator or Coral. It's, it's just slightly more limited, but it's a free program and you don't have to pay for it like you would do with some of those other platforms that are listed there. So that really is, is a whistle-stop tour and a beginner's guide to print and cut. 